Hello everyone, my name is Madison and welcome back to Hop and Help and today I'll be teaching you how to care for veiled chameleons. Now I highly suggest watching other videos and getting different viewpoints when it comes to researching care for your reptile, but write this video down on your list because I'm going to cover all the facts and give a lot of good advice from my personal experience caring for veiled chameleons. So I don't want to make this video too long, so let's get right on into the care. I'm just going to start out with my personal experience. Veiled chameleons are amazing, such interesting animals to work with. They're truly just like artwork walking around. They are amazing. However, they are not for beginning or even intermediate reptile owners. They can only be cared for by advanced reptile owners. And I'm talking at least having two, three, four, five, a bunch of reptiles prior to owning a veiled chameleon because they are just very fragile and their pair is very intricate. Now, if you are an experienced reptile owner looking to get a veiled chameleon, I would suggest a male veiled chameleon for your first because females are, again, even more fragile than just a male veiled chameleon. I'll get more into that later in the video, but please take my word for it and get a male veiled chameleon. That was a mistake I made and it's still something that I wish I could go back into the past and change because I was prepared for a male, I was not prepared for a female. Captivity difficulty. As I said, you want to be an advanced reptile and amphibian owner. And even if you have an advanced reptile owner in your house, I still wouldn't suggest it for your first, even if you can have their guidance, just because they are so difficult to care for. And veiled chameleons tend to have a person that they like or they can just, you know, tolerate because they aren't really handling animals. Uh, but they wouldn't really like if you have two people caring for them or three or four. They want to have their one person. Lifespan. So I'm going to say pretty generalizing it to five to ten years in captivity. Now five years is on the shorter end, but when you look at statistics, a lot of people don't care for veiled chameleons, right? So it's really hard to know exactly how long their lifespan is in captivity because they've been known to live way past ten years. So this is very general, but five to ten years, you're going to look up towards ten years with proper care. Activity. Veiled chameleons are diurnal, meaning they're just like us. They sleep at night and they're active during the day. You'll see your chameleon basking in the sun, looking for food, drinking from dripping leaves, and just kind of hanging out, looking around with their eyes. At night, your veiled chameleon's gonna snuggle down into a nice place that's super humid and go to bed. They kind of look like puppies, like all curled up in a ball. So now I'm going to talk about their behavior. I have this amazing chart available on my website, hopandhop.com. Uh, the This is a care sheet that I'm kind of basing this video video off of, so if you want something that's just written down for you to read, it's the same exact thing, I'm just making it in a video form currently. So that is hopandhelp.com where you can find this care sheet. But believe me, I wish I had this chart when I started owning veiled chameleons. This is going to be a huge help because their colorations and their activity is a huge sign if they're happy or if they're not happy. So when your chameleon is just resting and is pretty content with life, they're going to be about a lightish bluish green to a kind of like frog green color. This should just be when they're hanging out in their tank by themselves, basking. This should be the color they normally are because that means they're happy with the situation they're in. When they're happy or excited, this is something that always happens when I'm feeding my veiled chameleon, they will almost turn a neon green and their colorations of blue and orange will become very vibrant and their entire bodies will just kind of look like a highlighter. This is when they are feeling the most joyful. It's just their pure bliss when food's around or they're just really enjoying what they're doing. Now the bad sign is when you see your chameleon becomes a purple, dark gray, or black. This means they're stressed or angry or it can mean they're cold, but I'll get into that in a second. You do not want your chameleon to be a gray, brown, or purple normally in their enclosure. This means they're stressed out, they feel unsafe, or something is bothering them in the room. If you have dogs or cats, I'd highly suggest placing your veiled chameleon somewhere that they cannot get access to. You don't want the cat climbing on the enclosure, you don't want the dog barking at the veiled chameleon. It's going to make them super uncomfortable and they're going to be stressed out, and you don't want them to be stressed out in their room. It's like if you had somebody yelling at you constantly in your bedroom. You you wouldn't be too happy because that's your safe place. So this enclosure is their safe place and you need to make sure that they can keep that atmosphere because they live in a mesh enclosure so everything around them is a part of their life. Specifically when they're angry or feel intimidated, they're going to puff up their whole body. They have this little part on their chin that comes forward. They have the little spikes on there. Don't worry, they're not 
tough or anything it's just skin but they have these spikes on them they're gonna get these dark speckles down their body this can be dark black or it can be purple and their body will be like a darkish gray or brown this means that something is agitating them they'll hiss even uh, they will bite it does hurt so if you're chameleon if you're trying to pick up your chameleon and they start doing this you need to leave them alone and you need to leave them alone for like a day so that they can reset of course feed them miss them but do not try to handle. Honestly, I would only try to handle them once a week just because you do not want to stress them out that badly. When your chameleon's cold, they can be a dark green to that dark gray coloration if they're really cold, and that's simply because darker colors absorb heat better. So if your chameleon is normally a darker color but they don't seem agitated, that means you need to amp up their heat. They're too cold, and that's also something you don't want because it will stress them out. So if you're taking your chameleon to the vet and it starts to turn that dark green color because you don't have it under a heat lamp, that's okay. Two to four hours of that is all right because obviously you're going to the vet and you need to take care of them and that's just something you have to do, but you do not want that to be the regular. Now specifically for female veiled chameleons, they are going to lay eggs whether a male is present or not. So when they are holding eggs or stimulated, they're going to seem large and kind of lumpy. So when you see that your veiled chameleon all of a sudden is just super duper wide, and I mean they literally will go from this to like this when they're getting ready to lay eggs. I'm going to explain how you take care of that, but it's okay. Uh, they lay about every three to four times a year. It can be more or less than that. Uh, and once they're sexually mature, which can be from a year to two years old, if, in a way it's like a veiled chameleon, period. So they can be moody, it's very uncomfortable. All of a sudden they've got all these eggs, it's causing all this strain on their tiny bodies. So they can be a little aggressive then. And don't be worried if all of a sudden you see your veiled chameleon is nice and chunky and looks a bit lumpy. If all of a sudden your male veiled chameleon is large, that's most likely bloat and you're gonna wanna see a vet. Now for the enclosure. Veiled chameleon enclosures take patience. You don't just throw things together. It's a whole building process. Veiled chameleons need a mesh enclosure. They need to be able to breathe. And it causes a few issues because it's very hard to keep humidity in. So these are all things you're gonna have to work around, but they 100% need a mesh enclosure. They cannot be on glass. All the products I use are going to be in the care sheet at hopandhelp.com. So after this video, you can go check it out and see some of the brands that I use and love. And we begin by what I call building the base. Now here I'm using wooden moss sticks to make a firm base to then put the vines around. I simply do this by getting sticks that are about an inch longer than the enclosure and sticking it firmly through the sides. And I am so, so, so sad to say that unfortunately the brand that I use have now changed how they make these sticks. Obviously I like them, I've purchased them three times, but unfortunately they went from being wooden to metal, so now they rotate in the chameleon tanks and are not good. So unfortunately I can't recommend a brand Brand because the one I use changed. The number one thing you want to do when you're looking for these structural supports is that it is wooden, that it's natural, and that it has texture. So you can't just use like wooden uh, sticks that you put in bird cages because they have no texture. So using like driftwood pieces would probably be your second best option to the wooden moss sticks. I personally haven't tried this myself, so I can't say if they work from personal experience, but I've seen a lot of other owners use natural bamboo stakes. As long as they have texture and they're not smooth, they should work. As you're putting the structure in, it is important to know anything that's big that's going to be in the enclosure, so I actually just set my potted plant in there. Even though it's not potted yet, I want to make sure that the cage forms around this tree. And then chameleons don't actually hide in places like this coconut hut, but I was going to use it as a pot for a pothos plant, so I incorporated it into the base. Then I go to adding the larger leafy pieces. Now you can use live or fake plants. Here I'm going to be using some fake plants. How I attach these to the tank is actually twist ties. It's super easy. You just put it through the back of the leaves, make sure it's in a secure place, and then you pop it through the screen and you twist and it's secured. 
I then fold the extra pieces down flat so they just don't stick out. To prep the fake plants, I use a little bit of Dawn soap and warm water and I rinse thoroughly and then pat dry them. This just removes any dust or debris that came from the warehouse. So here I only placed two of the larger leafy vines because I have so much more to add to the tank, but I knew that's where I wanted to put these, so I'm gonna incorporate everything else around them. It's really important that you have somewhere for your chameleon to bask, so as you can see, I left the middle open. Now for optional decor. So it is slightly difficult to find flowers that are safe for your chameleon, but what you can do is get a bowl of warm water and place the flowers you look to use face down into them and let them sit for about five minutes. If when you pull the flower out, there's no dye in the bowl, they're safe, but if you pull the flower out and it is just full of dye, that is a non-safe flower to use. I noticed that the flowers that were safe had a slight plastic coating on them, just like the fake leaves that you'd buy at a reptile store. I attached these to the enclosure and I made them nice and secure by just basically sewing it onto the enclosure. As you can see, they're nice and secure, but keep in mind that your chameleon might try and eat these. If that's the case, you need to remove them, but my chameleons have never had an issue with them. Now this is optional privacy, but I absolutely love what I did. So chameleons need this screen enclosure, but when they're in a busy room like my frog room, it can get a little overwhelming when they just see everything that's going on. So what I did was get a bunch of these large leaf clippings. I simply rinsed them with Dawn soap and then sewed them onto the enclosure just like the flowers and they add great privacy and they look great because they kind of clean up all the, you know, sticks poking out and twist ties. Next comes how you're going to feed your chameleon. Now, none of this is a necessity, but I so, so, so suggest it to the point that I think it might be a necessity. This is a shooting gallery by TK Chameleons, and it is a lifesaver. So the package comes with all the instructions and everything you'll need to apply it to the enclosure. You simply just take these thumbtacks and poke it through the plastic. There is no right or wrong way to do this, just getting it through, and then you put the clear thing over the sharp end, and that's all that takes to uh, put it into your enclosure. Be careful to not stab yourself, because I almost did multiple times, but that's all it is. And then how your chameleon uses it is you put the crickets, super worms, dubias, whatever you're feeding them, into the uh, shooter and then they can come up as they please to eat them. So you don't have to worry about loose feeders in the enclosure harming your chameleon or harming their enclosure. Now for one of the most important things, how you keep the humidity. Now I use this reptile humidifier slash fogger and I love it. As you can see, I bought it in 2017 and it is still running great. I use distilled water because where I live, the tap water is kind of gross and could mess this up. And with distilled water, it's literally been running perfectly since 2017. So when the humidifier is on, it is a green light. And when it is on but out of water, it's a red light. And there is the dial and that's how you adjust how much fog comes out. So you take the tube and I make a hole that is the same size as the tube in the enclosure where you want to put it. Then I feed the tube through and I kink it at the top so that it can't slip down and then it just slowly goes down the enclosure back to the humidifier. And here is my humidifier schedule. UVB and heat bulbs run from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So my humidifier starts at 9.30 to 11 a.m. I missed around 10 a.m. and refill the drip system. Humidifier 1 to 2 p.m. and lunch. Missed around 4 p.m. and refill the drip system, which is where they drink water, so we haven't got there yet. Humidifier 6 to 7 p.m. Thoroughly missed, refill the dripper again around 9 o'clock. Humidifier 9 to 12 a.m. And then the humidifier runs again from 2 to 4 a.m. and 6 to 7 a.m. Chameleons need high humidity in the evening all throughout the night to the morning. This is what works in my room, but again, because it is a mesh enclosure, it's gonna change based on the surroundings, so you will have to tweak it for your chameleon. And here is the humidifier working, and then here's the humidifier with the drip system. Now let's get into what the drip system is that I just mentioned, how chameleons drink. Now chameleons only drink from dripping leaves, so this is very important. They only drink from dripping leaves, not stagnant water. As you can see here, this is my chameleon spinach drinking from her leaves. And here's an example of how when they're sleeping, they really like water because she likes to sleep underneath the drip system. And here she is sleeping literally on the fogger because she loves the humidity that much. How my drip system is set up is that it is on the same side as the humidifier. It is resting on top of the UVB light 
and then it's just dripping down onto that big vine of plastic leaves. Plastic vines is where she prefers to drink, so that is what I do, but a lot of chameleons do like it on live plants. Then the circle here is where you change how fast it drips. And now it's extremely important to monitor both the heat and humidity of your enclosure. So here I am putting the temperature sensor into the enclosure. I laid it flat after this because obviously she thought it was a bug when I was moving it, so we didn't want her to try and eat it. So here it is laying flat. And then the humidity gauge was right up into the vines where she couldn't find it. And then I just put the cords over to the shelf and that is where my gauge is. And here's the thermometer and humidity gauge that I use. I use it in all of my enclosures. They're really awesome. And I just take the suction cups off and that's how I use it for my chameleon. Plants and substrate. So as I mentioned before, it's very beneficial to use live plants or a mix of live and fake plants like I am. Here is a list I created of some of the best plants to use, but it is not limited to these guys. There's also the lipstick plant and yucca and rubber trees are also great options, so there's more on my care sheet listed than just these guys. Now for planting your plants, a lot of people just set pots into their enclosure, but because I have a female, I made a custom dig bin for her, and that is where I planted my stuff. Now for the substrate, you could mix it yourself. It's three-fourths dirt and then one-fourth sand. However, I personally use Repti soil, and it makes your life a lot easier. And here is my planted umbrella plant. I think it came together really well and it makes the enclosure so much more full. And as you can see, now that the tank is completed, I wove the vines in between the sticks and oh my goodness, you need these vines. I'm just gonna say it, you need them. They are so much better than what you're gonna find in pet stores. They come in thin and thick vines. I'm currently using thin, but as your chameleon gets older, I would suggest the thick vines. They're so easy to clean. The ends have a tip on them that you can remove and they come with extras. So if you cut it in half, you can add these onto the other sides. So the wire never sticks out. It's this nice textured rubber plastic material. So it's super easy to clean. And just overall, these are great sturdy vines. I 100% suggest them. I use them in all of my tanks that have, you know, tree frogs and whatnot in them. Now for the final touches, I use this bird ladder to help my female chameleon get out of the dig bin when she's done laying her eggs. And really it's good for any chameleon, even if it's a male, because it's an easy way to get from below up top. And I wanna note one more time that chameleons don't hide in things like that coconut hide, but I'm going to be using it as a pot eventually. I just have to line it with some liner, but I don't have that yet. So that's why there's no pothos in there. Now this next segment is specifically for female veiled chameleons, so if you have a male, you do not need to worry about this area, but if you have a female, this information is extremely important. And I'm going to say one more time, please, please get a male chameleon for your very first veiled chameleon because they are so much easier to care for and females are so incredibly fragile. It's easier and better for the chameleon itself and you to have experience with chameleons in the past so that you're not kind of jumping into caring for chameleons and on top of that, a difficult chameleon. Now, the first thing is recognizing when your chameleon is getting ready to lay their first batch of eggs. Females lay eggs whether a male is present or not. If a male is not present, they are not going to be fertilized, so no, you do not have baby chameleons and you should discard the eggs once they are laid. I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to restate how they act and how they look before they begin to lay eggs. The first signs is they're gonna get a little moody. It's very uncomfortable, they don't know what's going on, and all of a sudden their belly is expanding and they have more weight on their fragile bones. The biggest indicator is their bellies get big. As you can see here, there is an egg in her stomach that's between her spine and her leg. So that little bulge is in fact an egg. The difference between them being overweight and having eggs, if their throat begins to become large before the body that is overweight, if the stomach just starts to expand and there's lumps that you could physically feel or see, those are eggs. 
Just gonna put a warning up, you can feel their bellies for eggs, but they might bite you if you try, so it's best to just observe from afar. So I'm going to explain what I did with my Laban because I think I've really perfected it and it's really great for my female field chameleon. I had somebody build a box that sits perfectly in the bottom of the enclosure and it fills six inches of uh, soil in the front and eight inches in the back. I have my plant sitting in the middle that is planted in there. Failed commands really love to build their little caves in the roots of plants, so that is an option. And they can also climb out of the bottom from the, the branches, or I have a little tiny ladder that's made for birds to get out as well. That's what my veil chameleon tends to use. I fill it with repti soil, which is a natural soil and sand mixture. I try to use different substrates, mixing it with sand. The sand would always separate. So I really suggest repti soil. I know I, when I was doing my research, a lot of other chameleon owners were saying it was the best thing and it was what their veil chameleons would successfully lay their eggs in. It's important to keep this mixture moist and you might be wondering why is there sand in there? Well, veil chameleons kind of form a cave, almost like a sea turtle. So they need it to be structurally sound. The sand helps with that and it needs to be moist because that's the way that they're gonna form this little cave. It's very difficult for a veil chameleon to dig this hole because their hands are built like this. It's not very good for digging. So this is gonna take a while. It can take up to a day for your veil chameleon to do this. They're gonna be exhausted, they're gonna be tired and they're probably gonna be grumpy while doing it. Here is a video of my girl spinach down in her dig bin looking for a spot to make her cave. If you do want to blend your own substrate, it's 3 fourths soil and 1 fourth sand. Make sure it's mixed real good and moist. Then the sand you're going to use can simply just be play sand. For instructions on how to sterilize play sand, please check out the care sheet that is linked below. The top three plants that I suggest for a lay bin or you can just put into your male built chameleon enclosure is an umbrella plant, which I have, a hibiscus tree, and a weeping fig. These are really great. They're going to grow up and through the enclosure and they're going to have really nice roots for your female veiled chameleon to dig in. Now my veiled chameleon feels really safe and secure using her lay bin in her enclosure. I still highly suggest having a lay bin available in your enclosure even if you want to do this other method, but other people do have just a giant bin of substrate that they just set their veiled chameleon in when they're ready to lay their eggs. So that gives them a ton more substrate than you'd have available in your um, lay bin inside of an enclosure. So this could be something for a more experienced and older female veiled chameleon uh, because a newer one is gonna be like, why did you set me in this dirt? It most likely won't work out, but it is another method that you can try for an older veiled chameleon. Now for the size for your enclosure. I'm doing this based off of ZoomEd's Repti Breeze tank sizing. For a veiled chameleon, you're gonna to wanna to have a large for a baby and at least an extra large for an adult. Now for temperature. Now for your basking light and temperature. Now this is gonna sound odd, but I highly suggest using an indoor floodlight. While it's never about the money, but these are so much more cheap than reptile bulbs and they last way longer. These are really amazing for veiled chameleons because simply how they disperse the heat. It's going to fill the entire enclosure and have a direct spot on the basking area, but still warming everywhere else, especially because this is a very tall tank compared to other tanks for bearded dragons that are going to be wide and short. I did lots of research when it came to what type of bulb I was going to use, and just about everybody was suggesting this, who is an experienced veiled chameleon. So if you don't take my word for it, you can Google this, and there's tons of veiled chameleon forms and websites and PDFs and things like that that explain why these are super good. Reptile bulbs aren't always great because they just have a very direct source of heat. It's going to be like this beam of heat, and that doesn't exactly work for veiled chameleon enclosures. So I've had an amazing experience with these and saved a ton of money with them as well. So this is a Philips Duramax Indoor BR30 Floodlight 65 Watt. I got this at Home Depot, it's available at Lowe's and really any store that you can buy a kitchen sink at. <laughs> so your daytime temperatures are gonna be about 70 to 75 degrees, which is 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. And then a basking spot of 85 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is 29 degrees Celsius. Now this might sound surprising even to experienced reptile owners because it's new research. Your nighttime temperature should be about 50 to 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Now I know that sounds so cold and I was very confused when somebody told me about it. But the lovely thing about science is we're always figuring out new things and new research done by Bill Strand, 
found out that in the wild they have very cold nights and that deep sleep with the high humidity and the cold temperatures is ideal to them living a long and happy life. UVB lighting. This is such a necessity for veiled chameleons. It is so incredibly important that you have UVB light. I have a UVB light that extends across my entire tank. I really suggest it. You're going to need a linear bulb because if you think about it, do, do you receive sunlight? Just a circle on your arm. Is that how you get your, you know, your vitamin D? No, it comes from everywhere. So a linear bulb is going to provide a long area of UVB light because your chameleon, the chances of them just standing directly underneath this light all day long is very slim. And without proper UVB light, your chameleon can develop uh, metabolic bone disease, which is typically fatal in veiled chameleons. I personally use a Zoomed Reptisun T5 5.0 linear UVB bulb. The important thing is to just have a UVB bulb that is a T5 and 5.0. That is the proper requirements. You don't have to use Zoomed, but I've had lots of great experiences with Zoomed and Zilla brands. So those are the two I suggest. Now for feeding your veiled chameleon. Contrary to popular belief, veiled chameleons are strictly insectivores. Now you might've seen veiled chameleons eat things like kale before and flowers, but in the wild, the only reason they would eat a leaf or a flower is because they have some bug tickling their throat or they got something stuck in their stomach that they need to digest out. It's kind of like a laxative, kind of like a, you know, when you take a sip of water when you have heartburn, it's the same concept. So you do not need to feed and it's not suggested to feed uh, plants or flowers. They don't actually digest them. They kind of just go right through them. So do not suggest it, only insects. Crickets or dubia roaches should be the number one source of nutrition in their diet. I personally use gut loaded crickets. For information on how to gut load your crickets, please check out the care sheet. I go way into depth on that. And regarding weight and feeding, female veiled chameleons when they are laying eggs tend to stop eating as they get ready to lay while they're digging and just after they are done laying their eggs. Once they are done laying their eggs and they are back up and they're starting to act more like themselves, make sure you give them some good meals the next few days just because they use so much energy and they hadn't been eating. It's also important to note that a diverse diet leads to a very healthy and happy veiled chameleon. Giving her the occasional snack is always great for enrichment and just because it's different nutrients that taste different. 
on the care sheet, I have a whole list of snacks and how often you can feed them, etc. for you to check out after this video. Now you might be wondering, what size of cricket or dubia roach do I feed my veiled chameleon? Well, an easy rule of thumb for feeding amphibians and reptiles is the cricket should be no longer than the space between their eyes. Now that's a bit difficult for veiled chameleons because their face is kind of smushed, but I would say from cheek to cheek, that is the size that you should be feeding them. Uh, younger veiled chameleons are about a fourth inch and older ones are about a half inch to three quarters inch crickets or dubia roaches. Mine personally loves the occasional big cricket um, or hornworm or something like that, but you don't want to be feeding too many because again, they can get impacted because they're not always the best at chewing and swallowing their food before they eat the next thing. And then you're going to need to dust your crickets with strictly calcium powder. You do not need calcium with D3, just calcium. Chameleons and other reptiles can actually overdose if you give them way too much D3. D3 is a natural substance created in their body when they sit under UVB light. So with proper UVB lighting, you do not need to give supplementary D3. Here's the calcium that I use. I got this giant jug for $3 off of Amazon. This literally will last her entire lifetime and some more. So this is what I use every single day. And here on the left hand side, there are some other calciums that you can use for everyday feeding. Now, multivitamins are given twice a month. I personally do it the first Friday and the third Friday of every month. When you give your multivitamin twice a month, do not dust the crickets also with calcium that day. All you need to use is the multivitamin. I mentioned metabolic bone disease before, but I'm gonna get into it a little bit more because you do not want that to happen. Unfortunately, this is a common issue that captive field chameleons face often from inexperienced owners adopting them. This is just simply a result of improper care and the failure to provide the proper nutrients. Here are some very sad photos of chameleons suffering with metabolic bone disease. Why their bones begin to look like this and weaken is because once an animal's normal calcium deposits or reserves are expended, the animal's bone material will be used to derive their needed levels of calcium. That is what metabolic bone disease is. The body begins to draw calcium from the bones, weakening them, causing them to distort. The text here is from my care sheet on hopandhelp.com. To learn more about MBD, please check out the care sheet. Dehydration, also unfortunately a very common issue in captive veiled chameleons. As I've mentioned multiple times, they will only drink dripping water. This is so incredibly important to note. They will not drink like a dog out of a water bowl. It simply will not happen. They might do it once, I guarantee they won't do it again. So having a drip system uh, on a timer, having a drip system that is just a really big version of what I have, having a schedule with your veiled chameleon, you know them best, but they need to have dripping water. You can even have a bowl that collects the dripping water from down below because it can saturate the soil a lot. Uh, that's something you can do, make sure you clean it often. You need to make sure that your veiled chameleon has dripping water. They're not gonna drink from a bowl. And dehydration is noticed by the eye sinking into the head. Very difficult to treat once it happens. This is also a sign that your female veiled chameleon is egg bound. Typically, once they get to this point, it is too late. Um, a vet can give shots to try and start up contractions. But once a veiled chameleon becomes egg bound, it is very difficult to reverse it. That's why everything I've mentioned, it's so incredibly important that you have all these requirements so that they can live a happy and long life. Shedding. Now this is going to sound odd because if this is your first veiled chameleon that you're caring for, they dry shed. So you need to have this high humidity that most likely shed at night when you're going to get that 80 to 100% humidity, but don't miss your chameleon. They're not going to like it. They will not be a fan. Do not soak your chameleon unless it's a rescue and there's issues with uh, shed on the hands, but do not soak past the body. They do not like that. They dry shed. It flakes right on off of them. They might scrape it up against the mesh, but they dry shed. So no soaks unless you're getting a rescue who has issues with their, their hands. Um, if you do have your veil chameleon has some issues the first time they shed with their hands, you can put them in a very like one centimeter of warm water and soak them and then help them remove that shed. But normally do not do it. They're not like bearded dragons or leopard geckos where you can soak them prior to them shedding. They do it on their own. Just make sure you have those proper humidity requirements and then they will be perfectly fine when they shed. How to sex a veiled chameleon. Now this is very important because if this is your, if you're getting your first veiled chameleon, you need to get a male. Just trust me, they are so much more easy to care for. Even though they're difficult to care for already, they're way easier than a female. Now it's pretty easy in veiled chameleons. 
you just look at their hind legs. So they have their little clamp hands. If there is a thumb that looks like this, it is a male. If there's no thumb, it's a female. You can see this literally from when they hatch, they start to form these little thumbs. So that is the easiest way to tell. Once they're older, male chameleons are gonna have a much larger veil than a female and they're gonna be more colorful. But from the get-go, you can know if they have a thumb, they are a boy, and if they don't have a thumb, they're a girl. And to wrap everything together, I'm new to reptiles. Are they good for beginners? No, just no. You're gonna wanna look at a leopard gecko or a bearded dragon. Veiled chameleons are not good for beginners. I'm sorry, they just, they really need a different type of care. Also, these are more of show animals. They don't really like to be handled, it's very rare. I actually adop adopted my veiled chameleon because we grew a connection where she loved to come out and hang out with me at the pet store I work at. But quite literally, again, I work at a pet store. I will not sell to somebody who, uh, one, doesn't have the setup, has never owned reptiles before, etc. I'm very picky when it comes to who adopts these veiled chameleons because again they have they have a rep for having a short lifespan but realistically they're just not being cared for properly. So in the end I would just never recommend a veiled chameleon to a first time reptile owner. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped you out. If you'd like to see the written down version where I go way into depth on things like gut loading crickets and how to sterilize play sand, please check out the care sheet down below at hopandhelp.com. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a happy day and good luck with your new veiled chameleon. Goodbye.